All right, everybody, in this video, we're gonna look at each and every new feature to Pro L2. It's gonna be a very technical video, but stay strong. This information is super important, whether you're making a decision to buy or you've already bought and you wanna know what's going on, what to use, where, when, and why. This is the video for you. Let's go ahead and jump into all the new features in Pro L2 by FabFilter. So first of all, we've got some new scrolling features. Okay, so we've got a relatively fast one, and we've got a second fast one, which kind of always just scrolls from the right to the left. This one will bring it over to the middle and then go from the left to the right. This one's very slow, and this one is infinite, and it just means the waveform will consistently get squished, or uh, it will get smaller and smaller, but you'll always be able to see the entire track uh, since the meter was engaged. Over here in loudness, we've got the old school, or the Pro L1 version, which is just a way to zoom in on the meter. So here is 0 to 16, 0 to 32, 0 to 48, and then we have the K-scale targets over here. These are all from uh, Pro L1, but now we have Loudness, which is a whole new scaling system, which uses the more modern LUFS targets here, or metering system, that we can use to hit targets. So we've got CD target, which is negative 9, streaming target, which is negative 14, uh, negative 23, and negative 24 are broadcast standards. And then we can make our own custom target if we wanted to, just click it in. And what this does is allows us to try to hit it. So you can see zero is now negative 14. I've got the negative 14 target and it now says zero at negative 14 and that's we can actually change that back to absolute and now it's actually going to say negative 14 and zero dB is still at the top of the scale. We can also zoom out on this scale. This is just another cosmetic change if we want to zoom back in. Uh, I like to keep it zoomed in and I also like to keep it relative so it's zero because this meter down here is also going to be trying to hit zero and it just kind of keeps things quicker if you're trying to go to hit zero instead of negative 14 you know what i mean so let's go ahead and try to hit that target Great, and you can see that we have three different systems. We can go momentary, and this is gonna show us each and every transient peak. Short term is going to be a more average or general over time metering system. And then we have integrated, and this is gonna give us an average, as you can see there's a bracket right here. This is an average of all the sound that's been played since you refreshed the meter. And to refresh the meter, you just gotta hit this button. So let's go ahead and use this. So you can see that we're actually super close if we use the integrated system to hitting the negative 14 target. Other new features that are super important are the four new styles. We've got aggressive, modern, bus, and safe. Aggressive is for transient heavy music like EDM or trap. Modern is gonna be the safest bet. If you don't know what's going on and you're really not caring, you just want a loudmaster quick, go modern. Bus is useful for single channel limiting. You can use this in conjunction with the new sidechain feature which can be found over here in the output. Uh, this is the sidechain feature for mastering stems to be limited in the same way that it is on the actual master full mix. There's also safe, and this is really cool. And let me show you what I mean. If I turn on safe and activate the limit audition feature, which is another new feature, and then crank up the gain here. Actually, you know what? Let's go, let's go aggressive first so you can hear what this does. This actually lets you hear just what's being added to the signal.
So that's just what's being added to the signal in terms of game reduction. Watch what happens when I switch to safe. So it keeps the distortion at almost non-existent. So if you're going for no distortion whatsoever from the limiter, safe is obviously the safe bet, right? Pun intended. What we can do while using this audition feature is change it to, let's say, punchy, and then adjust these advanced features to get a smooth effect without having to use the safe style, because the safe style isn't meant to get things loud while these other ones are. So here is a very pumpy, punchy mix or punchy limiting. Here is a more general setting. So this is going to be keeping more dynamic so you still get the punch of the drums and stuff like that. You're really going to have to get in and decide what you want to do with these advanced features. But those are all available in Pro L1 so we're not going to cover them here in this video. While we have the output menu open here, we're just going to go over. We got DC offset filtering, very useful. The sidechain feature, which I briefly mentioned earlier, and then relative gain matching at the click of a button. Relative gain matching. This is actually called the unity gain button, but it's relative gain matching. It makes the output of the limited signal the same level or perceived level as the input signal. So you can see that there was no jump in the limited signal there because louder is automatically better in the human psyche. So this is very useful when you're trying to suss out exactly what's happening in the limiting process. That in conjunction with the audition feature are you're going to be able to get a really clear picture of what the limiter is doing to the audio and that's really useful. Uh, in Pro L1 you used to have to bring gain down to zero, bring the output down to zero and then hold down alt and drag up and the output would move in conjunction or in relation to the gain. But this can be pretty finicky, especially once you have your uh, setting dialed in over here, you need to go jump back into the output and tweak it back and stuff like that. And what else we got? We got True Peak. This TP right here stands for True Peak Metering. In Pro L1, it was called ISP Metering, which is Inner Sample Peaks. It's pretty much the same thing, just True Peak Limiting is the more modern term. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And what it does is let you see the peaks that will happen from converting a digital signal into an analog signal. The math and science behind that is way beyond the scope of this video. But if I turn off true peak limiting, the other new feature we're going to talk about in a second, and we look at our peak meter over here with the true peak metering button enabled. So you can see here we're at plus 5 dB and I had to boost it up, but if you're going for like a CD master, we're not even close to where we need to be. So here on the CD master target, we're actually getting plus 1 dB of clipping. That's why the ISP or the TP metering is so important. And now we have true peak limiting, so if I turn this on, watch what happens. It limits those ISPs from the signal, so we're always going to be getting zero no matter what. If we didn't want to use that and we wanted to trim off some of those ISPs before pushing that true peak limiter, we can actually do it in a couple of ways. One way would be to turn down the output a little bit. So if I come in and just go negative 0.5, so you can see we've cut it down. We've actually went from 1 dB to just 0.5 dB. And the next way we can trim that fat or those clips is by using oversampling. And Pro L1 used to have up to times 4, but now we have up to times 32. And what this does is adds resolution 
to the digital samples to reduce the amount of curvature that will go above zero dB when the digital signal is converted to analog signal. So watch what happens if I just go times eight right now. We're not even getting any clipping. So we've successfully reduced the signal uh, for the true peak by 0.7 dB, which is a lot, which means if we wanted to, we can jump back into the output and push it up a little bit now. This is super useful for getting as close as you can to true peak zero, and then turn on that true peak limiter just in case you get 0 0.1, 0 0.2 dB above zero. So it can, you're only pushing that true peak limiter uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 dB, and the rest of everything is done inside of the Pro L2 before that limiter is even triggered. Like I said, we have up to 32 times. This very CPU intensive isn't a joke. I can hardly run uh, 16 times with my screen recorder running. I, if I ran it with 32 times, my computer would probably blow up. But I believe that's it. Those are all the new features uh, inside of Pro L2. Very, very powerful stuff. I went over them very quickly. But when you're actually inside doing your limiting for your final distribution or your final product for distribution, everything that's been added here makes it so simple. And remember, uh, if you're too distracted by what's going on inside of the graph here, you can just turn it off. I forgot to mention where the tags that show you where and how much gain reduction is happening inside of the spectrum here. These tags right here are new as well, and they're very helpful to see where and how much gain reduction is happening. And one other thing I forgot to mention is Pro L2 is now supporting stereo surround sound up to 0.1.2 Adobe Atmos. I don't have that type of sound card, so I can't show it to you in any meaningful way, but it is supported if that's what you're looking to do with Pro L2. Anyway, I hope you learned something. In the next video, we're gonna go use Pro L2 in a real world situation and go ahead and actually get a re track ready for distribution. Pro L2 is available already on Plugin Boutique. Link's in the description of this video. Go ahead and click it, check it out, download your trial version, and get started limiting your tracks in the best way possible with Pro L2 by FabFilter. I'm Joshua Casper. See you in the next video.